Moluene manene na manene kazi, nam kele kile kuin kubo yetu, en diza kuni bona nonke en galen pelaveki e monti, en gonke belo e ICC, nange trawa e orient vieta. I'm very excited to go again to East London this weekend, East London and the Eastern Cape and South Africa, of course, uh, not in the UK, for Mecca of Boxing. And there's two bumper cards on, on the weekend. Let's start with the one on Saturday by Prava Promotions. And headlining will be the veteran, uh, the super flyweight or junior bantamweight, like we call it in South Africa, Gideon Black Tiger with the lazy, arguably our top a guy in the 115 pound division. And he's taking on a Mexican by the name of uh, Adrian Jimenez. Now, Jimenez is 13 wins, one loss, two draws. He's got a decent record. Not a big puncher, just like Butelezi. He's only got five knockouts. In his, uh, in, his, in his last fight, he scored a good win against uh, a, a much more experienced Adrian Belanueva on points. So he should be able to give a local man a tough fight. Now, Gideon Botelezi has been along for a very long time. In 2011, he even scored a win against the two-weight world champion, Eki Butler. Uh, so he's been around a long time. He scored some good wins and he also took his losses along the way. But uh, now he's been on a seven-fight win streak and we're hoping he can come through over flying colors on Saturday and go on to something bigger in the big four sanctioning bodies. Now, Botelezi is a pure boxer. He's not a big puncher. He is, does not have a great his chin, has been knocked out a couple of times. We all know that if you hit him on the sweet spot, he's going to go. But for the rest, he's got the complete skill set. Fast, rangy kind of guy, southpaw, and he likes to box. Um, I would say his weakness, obviously, um, if he, he gets caught because sometimes he throws a sort of an up jab from a southpaw position. And when you do that, you've got to make sure you're a taller guy, you've got a bigger reach. Uh, and that's where he got caught against guys like Dapudong. Um, sometimes he, 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 when he pulls back, he is not outside of a range and then he gets nailed by the other guys left to coming in onto, on, onto his lead. That would be from this side because he's fighting southpaw and then the left hook comes in from here. Um, so Aiden Jimenez, I couldn't find anything more than his record. There's, there's no footage I could find. He's from Mexico, he looks like a decent opponent. But I think Butelezi, he's got the experience he should come through on points. I can't see a knockout. He's not a knockout puncher. I say he's arguably our best 115 pounder because Arten calls it to Mezweni. We'd have an argument about that. He's, he's fresh off a win over Jonah Sultan. So Dumezweni and Butelezi were just outside the top 10. And the, and the other guy uh, that we'll have an argument about it is also fighting on the main supporting belt, and that is Yanga Showtime Sirkwebo. He's fighting a Filipino opponent. That should be another good one. And it's a really a stacked card. One of my favorites, a former IBF strawweight champion of the world. At one time, he was ranked number one in the world by Ring Magazine. That's in Kosinati Mabere Joy. He's on a bit of a resurgence now uh, in the light flyweight division. Um, he's, he's knocked out a couple of young bucks. And now he's, he's off a, a points decision over the amateur uh, prodigy in Shlanshla Chicha. It was very impressive, they stuck to the game plan. And he's now taking on another South African, Sipa Manda Baleni, who's a former minimum weight champion. And um, he's all Baleni, I've read him tough in the Eastern Cape. He's, in, he's been in against some good names like Olisa Magusha and lost on points to these guys. Never been knocked out. But uh, so he could upset the aging Joy, who's on a run, but I think the momentum is behind Joy. So I think he probably should come through. Uh, I think Baleni will go with this distance, but I'm riding with Mabere on this one. And uh, Jackson Chauke uh, from the Damien Durant stable is down there. He's making a defense of his South African flyweight title that he won from Tabang Ramakole on the undercard of uh, Dumas Wenis' big victory. And then uh, there's a fight. There's only eight round super welterweight fight. Uh, my um, uh, my uh, homeboy uh, Cristiano and Dombasi is he, based here in Cape Town with Emil Bryce. I have called uh, some of his fights from ringside uh, while doing TV commentary for Quesa Sports. Uh, those wars he had with Johanna Sali, uh, the second one that was when I was ringside, and he was looking for a fight with Emil Kalakuzi. It's, it's a local derby in Cape Town, and it never happened. Kalakuzi's people didn't want any part of it. Now he's jumping straight out of a frying pan into a fire because he's taking on undefeated Emani Colombo. They call him the general from the DRC. And of course, Cristiano is in Cape Town, but he's from Angola originally. 
um, and he's 11 and over 11 knockouts. So way to step up and take a big risk for Ndombasi is a really big underdog in this. And I think that would be a, that is going to bite be the, the most dramatic fight of a night because Kalambo doesn't take prisoners and Ndombasi is an explosive type who can punch as well. Uh, and he can get those hands go and he's dangerous, but he also gets hit. And uh, maybe, you, maybe you'll be the guy to uh, test Kalombo. But um, uh, as much as I'm rooting for Cristiano, I think uh, he's not going to go eight rounds without getting hit. There's just no way. As Cristiano gets into a brawl, he does get hit. He's not going to be able to box Colombo and stay away for, for eight rounds. He, they're going to throw it down. So I would think Ndombasi just needs to hit Colombo first before Colombo hits him and test that chin. You know? But either way, somebody's going down. Um, I've I've got a ride with uh, uh, with uh, Emani Colombo on this one. I'll be rooting for Cristiano and Dombasi, but Emani Colombo is a really really dangerous prospect. So I'm looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be a real slam bang affair. Then we move on to Sunday, where I'll be in Mecca, the legendary Orient Theatre, and I'm very excited to be there as well. That's a promotion of Ram Rambo Africa promotions of Teres and Tutu and Ompesane and Yatela. Headlining there, the homecoming, top uh, junior featherweight uh, prospect, Ludumo, 9mm Lamati. Also a guy that can punch a very tall, uh, very tall, rangy um, kind of fighter. Um, he's fresh from a win in the UK against uh, uh, Brian Menenes. Um He didn't look so great in that win. He, he was a little bit, he looked nervous, a little bit sloppy, overextended here and there. Um, made it closer than it had to be, but he won, and uh, he is back, and he's taking on Richie Mepranum from the Philippines. Now, Met Mepranum is a seasoned veteran as they come. You know, if you look at his record, he's fought them all. He's had three shots at a world title, fought for the flyweight title, WBO version, got stopped in five rounds by Julio Cesar Miranda. We remember him from South Africa. He fought Maruti Mpantalane here to a points loss. Then he lost to Juan Francisco Estrada. Um, uh, got stopped and uh, he retired after eight or nine rounds. I think now Juan Francisco Estrada has just beaten Srisaka Tsorumbisa. He's a current uh, under the 50 pound champion and uh, he's a pound for pounder. So that tells you something that Mep about Mepranum. He can hang in, in there. And uh, then he also moved up to junior bantamweight. He challenged Carlo Carlos Cuadras. Also got stopped late. Now Cuadras gave Chocolatito Gonzalez a very tough fight. So. Mepranum is seasoned. He's fought Adrian Tyson Hernandez twice, losing on points. He's also been stopped by bantamweight Luis Neri. Uh, and now he's in the super bantamweight or junior featherweight division. So I've, I've, he's, he's had a good win in China, but uh, Mepranum is he, a southpaw and he's got a very shifty style. He moves this way, that way. He knows how to survive. Doesn't have a big punch, so I don't think that's going to trouble Lamati. Lamati's got a sizable reach and I this advantage here. So he basically just needs to stand back, pop a jab, and throw, uh, throw the right over. And that's a classical reply to a southpaw, nail him with the right. And I think Lamati is going to do that um, if he stays calm and not get over eager. I think the, the, the height, reach, the size will be too much for Mep Mepranum, even though Mepranum has got all that experience, but there's a difference between having the experience on one hand and uh, being a uh, shop one on the other hand. So we will, uh, we, will have to, we will have to see what happens. And I think Mepranum has got a lot of wear and tear. He's, he's undersized. So I expect Ludumo Lamati to get him out of there in about five or six rounds. Now on the undercard, it's once again a very stacked undercard. We've got a top uh, a prospect there, uh, uh, Sive Nonchinga, who's climbing the ranks, and he's taking a step up against uh, Siabonga Sio. Now, Sio, we know him well. Um, he, he, he lost only to the top guys, lost to Heki Butler and lost to current strawweight uh, WBC mandatory contender, uh, Simpiwe Konto. And, and he, gave him, he gave him good competitive fights. So a lot of people are saying by moving Sive Nonchinga too fast, like they, like some people are saying they did with Nslan Chicha against Mabere. Um, I think it's a calculated risk. I don't think Sio is Mabere. Um, I, I, I think 
if I sit one pace and he doesn't have those heavy hands that my barrier has got. So yes, it is a step up for Seven on Chinga, but uh, I think he, he's, he's going to come through it. I don't think he's going to stop Siabonga uh, Sio. I think he's going to win this one on points, but this, this is a big step up. I I, uh, I don't think Sio is my barrier, or of course he's not enjoy my barrier is his nickname. I don't, don't think it's the same kind of fighter. And I really like the looks of Sive and Chinga. I've seen him up there in Port Elizabeth, so I think he's going to make it uh, uh, on points. And then we have another uh, prospect, um, uh, Luanda Mtwanambe, and I expect him also to come through his fight. And it's a really interesting card. And we have, uh, we also have, uh, let me just go and take a check here who is on the undercard there. Um, we have Jackson Chauke defending on the Kwaba card and on the rap card we also have uh, Michael Mukwena uh, fighting. He is um, defending against uh, Pumalela Sobashle and Polisa Magusha is also on the card. Uh, Lu Luanda Antwanambe is taking a step up against a much more experienced Fikile Mlonjeni. So that will be it. So I think Luduma Lamati will go through it. Sive Nonchinga, uh, which, well, uh, I think he's going to get past uh, uh, Sio and Luana and Twanambe. He's got a more experienced opponent, so let's see, but I think he will also get uh, through it. And then Michael Mukwena, Mike Pronto from Anton Gilmore Gym, has also got a fight there, uh, fighting for the ABU title, and um, I expect him to come through that as well. So good luck to all the fighters. Uh, let's see how Gideon Botelezi and Ludu Malamati do in their respective fights. And uh, I'll see you guys in Mecca. And until we see each other there in East London, Pakamani is under.